Hi guys, it's Stacy from Art on the Rocks with Gear. I just wanted to jump on and share a really fun video that our customers are loving and we're a huge fan of this kind of easy option to use Magic Flow. So I'm going to be doing a fun kind of beachy vibe photo, not photo, what's it called? This isn't a photo, ceramic project, project, that's what I was looking for. I'm really excited. This is a really fun, easy way to use Magic Flow and some of Gare's specialty colors. So first up I'm going to do on this, I want to lighten up the colors. So to achieve that, I'm going to start with a matte white base. So I'm going to use my fan brush, some matte white, and I'm just going to get one nice thick coat of matte white on my lantern. We uh, have put on that one nice thick coat of matte white, and now we're going to play around with some color. So I'm a big fan of this. I kind of encourage my uh, customers to play around with the pottery glazes, especially when you're incorporating Magic Flow. So the way that I explain it to my customers is that when you use Magic Flow in between colors, it kind of forces them to interact with another one another this way. So I do a lot of kind of sponging and painting layers and putting Magic Flow in between. So I'm gonna show you guys that today. So I'm gonna start off with some pottery patina, one of our favorites. And I'm just gonna squirt a little out onto my card. You can use one of these round sponges, Gear has them, we order them and we even sell them to our customers, they love them. Um, and they work really well for sponging things, cleaning things, all the things. Uh, I also am a fan of a natural sea sponge. So we'll start off with the sea sponge and I'm just going to dab some of that paint right onto the sponge and very kind of haphazardly, I like that word, uh, I'm just going to apply nice, heavy dabs of my patina. So I'm not really too worried about where it's going. It could go heavier in some spots and lighter in others. I'm leaving some of the white exposed and not actually painting over it at all. And we're gonna sponge that on. Oh, I need a little more. Refill. All right. This is a nice uh, effect with very little effort. Uh, kids can do this, grown-ups can do this. We cater to a lot of adults and uh, I love this process. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the bottom too just cause I like a finished piece everywhere. Whenever I'm sponging, especially when I'm using a sea sponge, I like to kind of turn my hand this way, turn my hand this way. So every time I dab, it's not the exact same shape that this little cutout is. Did you guys see that fall? It was a little piece of cardboard that scared me. I thought it was a spider. It's not, we're okay. So I'm gonna boop, boop, boop. Just sponge that on. And then I let it dry a little bit. Um, let it dry. And I'm going to grab some Magic Flow. Dun, dun, dun. It's called Magic for a reason. You'll see the end result. So you can continue to use, sometimes I don't even wash the sponge. I'm okay with using the same little dirty sponge. Sometimes I like to like flip it over or bend it or fold it just so I get a different shape on my sponge. Boop. And we're going to grab some Magic Flow. I like to dab off the Magic Flow so I'm not applying a ton. And I'm just gonna dab lightly some Magic Flow everywhere. Right over my patina. You can see through it, I'm not covering everything. All of this is acceptable. The magic will happen later. I was gonna try and slide in, that was dangerous. All right, so I've got my matte white sponged on pottery patina. 
sponged on magic flow. We're going to do our next color. I think purple is always a good decision. And Plum Island with matte white under it is the most gorgeous shade of lavender ever. So I'm going to squirt out a little Plum Island. Now, because I'm not doing this in three coats per color, I'm not afraid to dab it on nice and thick. And I'm going to leave some spaces not filled in. I call it the Swiss cheese method. I can work my way around. And don't be afraid to really kind of sop up some paint and dab it on nice and thick. I'm going to do the whole bottom and around the top. That noise helps. Don't be afraid to let some of that patina shine through though. I'm not covering everything. Look at the Swiss cheese effect. Sometimes you can find a little hidden face look. Eye, eye, nose. I want to change that up a little. I don't want my candle to be creepy. And just sponging it on. Dabbing it on wherever you want. Make sure you grab the right bottle. More Plum Island. All right. Now, I'm going to just make sure I'm getting all around the tip top too and dabbing it in some spots on the bottom. Now, as this is drying, it happens pretty quick. I can even go in and throw a little extra on some spots and get a nice second coat in. I'm going to fill up a couple spots a little heavier and then we're gonna let that coat dry all right next step i'm going to grab some magic flow on my sponge again so make sure you grab your magic flow i often label the caps cloud white and magic flow so i don't get confused especially when i'm working with both at the same time and give my magic flow a good shake and just dab it a little bit you don't need a ton Again, whenever I'm using a sponge, I like to kind of always hold it a little different and even rotate my arm around and my hand around so I don't get like a polka dot pattern so the sponge looks the same every time it touches your piece. So I'm going to grab a little bit of Magic Flow. I'm going to dab it off. And we're just going to add some Magic Flow here or there. It doesn't need to be everywhere. I want all of these colors to interact with one another. So you can see all the textures on it and you can see the texture from the sponge, but everything has at least that coat of matte white on the whole outside. All right, then we're going to do one more coat of color. We're going to use Babbling Brook. I feel like you can't go wrong with a crystal glaze. Babbling Brook has some gorgeous crystals in it and some fabulous movement. And with all those other layers and the magic flow, big things are going to happen. All right. So give it a shake. I'm like, I always want to make sure I really got all my crystals. So I'm very <laughs> thorough in my shaking. All right. Spill some of that out. I still haven't even washed my sponge. I like to use the same tools a lot. I embrace the mess and just get a little dirty. So I'm going to sponge on some Babbling Brook where I decide to do so. Doesn't need to be everywhere. Swiss cheese method, just wherever I want. I can see all those little crystals. I love the tiny crystals in this particular glaze. And I'm just sponging that on here and there. And a little bit on the bottoms. And that's about it for this project. I'll pop back on when this comes out of the kiln, the little kiln magic. 
I want to make sure, especially on these lanterns, clean out your holes well when you're dabbing and layering all these things. And I'll give you guys one more up close shot so you can see the texture and colors. There we go. Look at those crystals. Goodness is about to happen. Ooh. See you after we're fired. <laughs>